they're standing on uh, the police observation tower, so not police, but security spotters in case there's any sort of trouble, uh, any sort of uh, mischief going on. Um, basically, we're just looking out on top of the sort of the outdoor arena that's sort of at capacity for about 6,000. Main stage, we've, we've gone for the theme of like a pyramid type thing with a screen behind it uh, with an eye that keeps blinking, just like the sort of pitch on American Dollar. Um, and as we sort of pan round, we've got uh, behind me three tents, um, one for a techno arena, uh, a house arena, and a drum and bass arena. Full fun fans, you can see a big wheel, waltzes, a uh, few other uh, rides, bar, uh, merchandise stalls, uh, chill out areas, a, a turn into tent over there for just to relax with the old ambient music, etc. People are sort of like ringing up, driving all over the country trying to find tickets, and they people in Bristol driving to Cambridge trying to get a ticket. They're desperate. Lorry for an old flight case just fell off the line. Um, we've got 60k uh, sound going out here, so it's not bad. I don't think we'll be able to use it all properly because we've got a, a chap that lives 800 metres that way who's uh, a, a bit of a fascist and um, he doesn't want us to do this event and uh, he's got this sound recording equipment in his bedroom at night uh, making sure we don't go over the restricted levels. And it's going to piss down, unfortunately. Oh, no. At 7 o'clock, the security goes BBC, look east through the gate, what can I do? Turn to fuck off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. No, the whole of London's sold out, I'm afraid. <laughs> we try and think ahead to every eventuality and plan in safety factors to take account of that, make sure the facilities and the resources are there to help people. But at the end of the day, we want people to have a good time. If motors want to make money, but they want to do it again, they don't want any problems there. They're quite moral about it, although a lot of people wouldn't believe so. They want it to go well, obviously. My girlfriend, obviously, she's from a fairground background, so uh, because of the rides have come in, you know, it's a bit, you know, most raves usually have a couple of rides here and there, but so we've got seven rides here, so, you know, once the kids are uh, fed up with dancing, they can chill out <laughs> on a nutty ride. Like we budgeted for a big police bill, um, they actually tripled what we had budgeted for and wanted like a, a substantial, about like, seventy thousand pounds to be precise. In the end, we've had a had a meeting and resolved the situation. We ended up paying twenty four thousand pounds, which is a bit more than we anticipated. But we've been promised that that'll be stay the same next year, regardless of how many people come if there is going to be a next year. Obviously, I find it a bit downgrading to pay the police when all they do is, is, is target drug dealers, etc., put the drugs on the table and then say, look, this is what these parties are creating, it's all our fault, which, in fact, this is one of the safest environments you'll ever get, you know. Quite, quite aware that uh, this type of event does encourage uh, to a degree and in fact centralise itself around drugs to a certain extent and clearly from a policing point of view that is an issue we've got to look at uh, along with the traffic, the public order possibility and crime issues and this event will have a variety of policing issues uh, and initiatives in respect of all of those. Uh, we will be mounting an, an operation as part of this event in respect of the drugs in the same way as we will be the traffic problems, the crime problems and so on. You are now about to witness the strip of street now. say I'm all clean. What use that will be, I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm good all that tape. Yeah, well, I don't know. I mean, they've got to search everywhere. I mean, I'll just have one go out with a bit of bush on him. So, um, I don't know. It's, um, as long as we're all squeaky clean, I don't think there'll be no problem. Yeah. Cheers, then. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. 
What? What? Yeah, you know what time we got to be here? Yeah? yeah, she knows. Yeah, yeah, that's it, she knows. Yep. Five minutes, five minutes away. Uh, no. Well, no, yeah, no, yeah, um, yeah, that's all right, yeah, come and see me on the site, yeah? Oh, they'll just radio through and I'll speak to you. Oh, all right. Yeah, OK, bye. Smell? Money. What money? For what? It's the money to pay for a flat tire. Oh, but fucking go see Rosenberg. He's here now, ain't he? Quid. He's here, 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 he's got bloody money on him. How much is it? 80 quid, I need to give it to you. Fucking hell. Well, that's, that's 500 I'll give you now. 8, yeah? 500, yeah, because I gave you 20 earlier. I'm giving that rip one, that's fucking rich. Oh, yeah, yeah. One, two, yeah. Four. settled down from the fair business, say, 10, 11 years ago now, um, because my husband got blood pressure, and fair business is very, very hard, and you have to stay up all night, and pull down and move, we had a big ride, so we just decided to settle down and go into catering, and we had a, a catering van in Northampton, and Murray worked in an office near Northampton, and Stacey was manager of the catering thing, so that's how them two got together. Yeah, that's how we've ended up here. Circle, that's right, yeah. We started off actually with hot dogs when we got married 30 odd years ago, so we have turned full circle. Because that was hot dogs on the fairground then, you know. It wasn't uh, these sort of events and uh, markets about then, so it was fairground hot dogs. Improvise, don't I? 